I'm Desiree Stordahl, the Senior Research and Education Manager here at Paula's Choice. And this lovely lady sitting next to me is Nicole. Nicole is the newest member of our content team, our newest writer, someone I'm very excited for you guys to get to know. Say hello to everyone. Hi, everybody. So this is our Facebook camera and our fans over on Instagram. Hi, everybody over there. Uh, just a warning, if you see this bandage on my, sh on my arm all show long, I burned myself in the oven. So let's just get that one out there right now. It's a little bit of a hideous mark, but we've got it undercover. So today we're going to be taking all of your skincare questions. We're going to do some fun giveaways. We're going to have some exfoliation one-on-one. -on -one. So start writing in with your questions. But before we jump into all of that, let's get to know Nicole. So Nicole has a pretty interesting background and I want you to start out with like your writership and just all the different projects you've worked on because it's pretty cool. Yeah, before I joined this fabulous team at Paula's Choice, uh, I was a freelance writer for a lot of years and uh, I've written about travel and love and relationships and um, I've been, my work has appeared in places from like Mary Care, Claire, I'm gonna start over, Mary Claire to the Washington <laughs> Post to the New York Times, um, I've written a memoir and um, I just decided no big deal. She's written a memoir. <laughs> no big deal. And uh, I just decided to change course a little bit over the last couple of months, and I'm really happy to have landed here. And then not just your writing skills, but you also have some interesting stories about your travel journeys. That's a little bit of an adventure seeker. This yeah, one. and um, when I'm not here, working on getting to know all these fabulous products and these fabulous people. I'm working on a book about a recent trip I took sailing around the world on a three-masted tall ship. No big deal. This is like a true story. <laughs> How long was this sailing trip? Uh, I was gone for almost a year. It was just over 11 months. And you hit how many ports? Uh, I think seven, 15 countries and 17 ports, something like that. Those numbers aren't exactly right, but it's pretty close. I'm looking forward to that book. I'm looking forward to having written it. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you know, you dabbled a bit in beauty over the years in your writing, but really when you came to Paula's Choice, it was kind of like coming with a clean slate. Yeah, I'm a bit of a lazy skincare person, or I was, I should say. I've been totally converted, and now I can't believe what I was doing to myself uh, in the past. So I'll just be the example of what not to do while we're here <laughs> on the beauty couch. Yeah, because you said when you first came, your skincare routine was? Uh, pretty much I just would take off my pants and fall into bed, and that was my nighttime routine. Yeah. Uh, I made the big mistake of telling Paula that, but not until after she hired me. <laughs> But you've come a long way. I mean, I can already tell the difference in your skin. I can tell the biggest difference in my skin. I'm super excited to tell you all of my secrets. So if you, like me, were very late to the game, you don't have to feel like it's too late. It's never too late. Because this is 45 years old. It's not so bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> Hot mama. Okay, let's see what some of your favorite products are now that you've kind of gotten your way around the brand and learned more. All right. So if you know anything about Paula's Choice, you know about our obsession with SPF. And um, if you're anything like me, you know that SPF can sometimes not feel great on your skin. And that was always my problem. I was a little bit lazy about my sunblock because I felt like whatever it was, not these products, whatever it was that I was putting on my skin made it so my face couldn't breathe and mm -hmm. then I got sweaty and then I didn't feel like I looked cute and I was like, forget it. I'll just fry in the sun. Just, <laughs> I'll just get these souvenirs of my travels on the sides of my face. And so um, I actually do have some hyperpigmentation and some sun, some sun damage. I had to get a, a precancerous big thing taken off my face not long ago and it made it very clear very quickly that sun damage is not a thing to mess around with. So mm -hmm. my first day that I came here I met with Josh from our CS team and I said find me sunscreen that feels like I have nothing on my face. And he said, oh, try resist youth extending daily hydrating fluid. SPF 50, by the way. SPF 50. And I went back down to my desk and I was like, whatever. <laughs> and uh, I didn't think that I would be able to find the thing that I wanted, which is something that really felt weightless and had a super smooth texture. And two hours later, I seriously forgot that I had it on mm -hmm. my face and uh, I was converted sort of from that time onward and now I never leave home without it. 
Yeah, and when we say fluid on um, the product name, I mean this really is a fluid product, which when we first came out with this, I just wasn't used to sunscreens that were like this. And it just makes it so light that just like you said, you can put it on and you don't even know that you're wearing it. Yeah, it rubs right in, it doesn't feel greasy, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel powdery, it doesn't leave a strange cast on your face. It's seriously invisible and it feels like nothing. Um, and I know a lot of people like to feel like they have stuff on their face so that they can be convinced that it's working. I don't want to feel anything on my skin yeah. ever. I think a lot of people fall into the same category as you. And then what's the other product? Oh I yeah, over there? this one is my favorite. I never really understood toners. When I did wash my face, it was just like seed of the, in my old world before <laughs> I, let's be very clear, before I discovered Paula's Choice and was converted to the fact that you actually do have to take care of your skin on a pretty regular basis, um, I would just sort of wash my face with the CFL and put on whatever kind of moisturizer I had. And that was pretty much it. And I never really understood toner. I'm like, why am I just mm -hmm. putting more water on my face? I just put water on my face. And I didn't really understand that toners could actually have restorative properties. Yeah. It's a big deal. I think a lot of people, they either think what you thought, which was like, it's more just like this bland water type of product, or they're used to the stringent type of toners where yeah. it sucked their skin dry and there was tons of alcohol. And I did know, I did have some skincare knowledge before coming here and I knew that I shouldn't be putting any of those witch hazily alcohol mm -hmm. products on my face. Um, I have dry skin to begin with and my skin really tends toward redness and I knew to, to avoid those things but I never knew that a toner could really be beneficial and be nourishing and be moisturizing. Yeah, and it's a big deal. Now it's the first thing I do after coming out of the shower. I put it right on and it immediately takes away that if you have kind of a dry type feeling, if you get out of the hot water, it immediately takes that away. Yeah, it definitely feels really refreshing and hydrating, but in a very light way. You know, somebody for oily skin, they can use their toner as their moisturizer because it can add hydration and then antioxidants, skin replenishing ingredients. It's just a different texture than people are used to, but still packed with all those good anti-aging ingredients. Oh yeah, you said. If it's a good one from Paula's Choice. <laughs> exactly. And this one is normal, oily, and combination, so pretty much everyone. And also, uh, I used to have a really enlarged pores right between my eyes and on the sides of my nose. And I feel like since using this toner, um, mm -hmm. that has all magically disappeared. I went to dinner with my parents the other day and my dad said, your complexion looks so nice. What have you been doing? Dad, wait a lot. I know, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> and this one has niacinamide in it, which is one of those ingredients that does help with issues like enlarged pores. So exactly. it makes sense. And um, am I correct? Is this the one Paula herself uses? This is the one Paula herself uses. <laughs> yep. So I, when I had my first meeting with uh, client services, I was like, just give me everything Paula has because <laughs> her skin is amazing. And then they said, you have the exact opposite kind of skin as Paula, so you have to have your own routine. But this is the one place where we overlap. Yeah. By the way, if you guys ever want to know what Paula's products are, there's an article on our website called, uh, I think it's just Paula's Skincare Routine search for it, but you can see her exact lineup of products, which is pretty interesting. I don't know if I've gone there Ooh, yet. I'm gonna you're going to have to check it out. Okay, and then you've got one other thing over Last there. Last but not least. Oh, um, yes. I, I feel so Vanna White right now. <laughs> um, this is the Skin Perfecting 2% BHA Lotion. Um, this is my daily exfoliant, and I always thought I had dry skin, but it turns out what I had was dehydrated skin, which you can explain better than I can. Yeah, so dehydrated skin is something that we often cause ourselves by using the wrong product. So truly dry skin would be like you're using the right stuff and your skin is still that tight, dry, flaky, that's just the skin type you were born with. But dehydrated might mean that you were using, you know, alcohol-based products or um, just other types of products that were making your skin have that dehydrated texture. But really, once you take care of it, then you can find out what your true skin yeah, type is. Yeah, because I was like, how is my skin sort of feeling dry and like I need to exfoliate every single day no matter what I do, no matter how much moisturizer I put on, it's never it's never right. Mm -hmm. And um, of course the answer is that I was not using a BHA exfoliant which has solved 
pretty much every single one of my skin problems. So I told you about that I have these enlarged pores. Um, my cheeks tend very much toward redness uh, and they have um, these tiny bumps like kind of starting here and going all down my jawline and I'm too lazy to wear concealer all down here and every I have been to a bunch of dermatologists who were like that's just what kind of skin you have and I believed for a long time that I had to just Deal accept the fact that my skin was going to be red and bumpy all the time and it turns out my skin does not have to look like that at all and um, I don't I'm not wearing concealer right now it's not perfect because I'm lazy about my makeup but you can see it's like, looking good. It's looking a lot it's smooth. better and it's smooth. Like I used mm -hmm. to, I don't know, I'm a single lady and I would go on dates with people and I would always get embarrassed if people wanted to touch my face right here in, you know, that dramatic way that they do <laughs> in movies. But now I'm like, come on, fellas. Touch me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into a little bit more about exfoliation because Nicole expressed when she first came on. I think I just made myself blush. Hey. <laughs> Well, this will help with that. Exactly. So, um, you know, exfoliation, we have a ton of information out there for you guys, but I know it can be overwhelming because when you're trying to figure out, should you use AHA versus BHA? Um, and we have so many different exfoliants that it does become a little bit of confusing for people, of confusion for people. So one of the things to know that why we have so many different AHA and BHAs is a lot of it comes down to texture. So we want people to be able to find the one that's perfect for their skin type. A lot of other lines, you know, they might just come out with one exfoliant and just kind of pose it as like this one size fits all recipe. Well, you know, there's a lot of different things like a lotion being better for dry skin, a gel being better for somebody with that in-between type of skin, a liquid being better for somebody with oily skin. So we have the different texture options. We also have different strengths, you know, for, BHA products, we have the 1-2%, to 2 which are more of our mild daily exfoliants. And then in the 4% range, you've got that higher strength for somebody who really wants that advanced exfoliation. And then um, same with our AHAs, they come in different concentrations, depending on what your skin type can handle, depending on what you're looking for. So let's get into what are the, some of the things that you found confusing at the beginning that we could kind of help our viewers out answer those same questions. Yeah, I was super confused. I knew I needed a daily exfoliant because right away, it there's basically four things that you have to do, which is <laughs> step one, wash your face. Um, step two, the toner. Step three, the exfoliant. exfoliant. And then four, the moisturizer with sunscreen. And um, when I began, I was like, already that's a lot of products for me. And it took about three days for me to be totally converted. And I was like, I'm never going back to my old ways again. But at the beginning, I couldn't figure out which exfoliant I needed because AHA, they said, who's they? I don't know. <laughs> um, I understood AHA to be best for dry skin and sun damage. And I have both of those things. And then I understood BHA to be best for um, enlarged pores and redness and bumpy things mm -hmm. and so I was like but I have all yeah. those things so where do I begin right and so that is where it gets a little bit confusing um you know with AHA and BHA they work a little bit differently so AHA exfoliates on the surface layer and then BHA goes further and penetrates into the pore. So when we say AHA is best for dry skin and sun damaged skin, that's because it's really specialized in removing those built up dead layers of skin. And it um, does have some hydrating properties. AHA by nature it has that, so it's really great for dry skin. So it's a good way to delineate between the two. If you're really just trying to think about it in the simplest terms, AHA for that dry sun damaged skin. With BHA, it's oil soluble, which means it literally can penetrate into the pore, dissolve those substances. So all of the different types of issues you've got going on, you know, clogged pores, congested pores, blackheads, enlarged pores, the bumps that we talked about, all of those things it can go in and unclog. So it still exfoliates on the surface like an AHA does, but it also goes a little bit deeper. So if you're somebody who has a lot of different concerns, that's when I think it gets more simpler to say, go with BHA. It does similar things to an AHA, but you get those added extra benefits with the pore unclogging. But yeah, it, and I never realized that an exfoliant could also help with redness. Yes. And so 
when finally I sat down with the client services, they were like, just tell me what your main concern is. And I was like, I hate how my cheeks are always red and bumpy and I hate these huge pores right here. And BHA helps with that because it's soothing by nature. It's actually uh, related to aspirin. And so it has soothing properties, which really is nice for somebody with sensitive skin or skin that just tends to flare up more. Yeah, so I'm a convert. I think all of you guys should be too. <laughs> so let's actually get into um, some of your guys' questions, but before we do that, let's do a little bit of a quiz on exfoliation for our fans, because I think this will also help clear up some um, confusion. So write in with your answers. We're gonna take the winner, and um, we'll get you the exfoliant of your choice. We'll reach out to you, or you reach out to us via social media. So the first one is, if you struggle, and you, if you were listening, you're gonna know the answer to this. <laughs> If you struggle with clogged pores, which should you use, AHA or BHA? Do we have an answer? <laughs> Got an answer. Um, S Blazer 227 says BHA. Hey, you got it. You get a BHA exfoliant. <laughs> Actually, whichever exfoliant is right for your skin type. We'll be in touch with you to help you customize and pick your perfect one. But that is the correct answer. Wonderful. Okay, next. True or false? I love true or false questions. Um, you need to wait a few minutes to apply the rest of your skincare products after an AHA or BHA exfoliant. So do I you totally need to know wait. the answer to this. <laughs> Do you need to wait? That is the question. This is one that trips people up. Perry Adcock says false. That is the correct false answer. False is correct. You don't need to wait. Just like put it all on. And I think that's one of the things that kept me from having a, a several step skincare routine is just, you know, basic inherent laziness. <laughs> and uh, I didn't want it to take a long time. Mm -hmm. And it turns out it doesn't have to. I. I do the thing with the face washing and then the other three steps in less than 30 seconds. Yeah, it's really quite fast. Okay, so the next one, another true or false. So you have a 50-50 chance. You shouldn't use retinol and a leave-on exfoliant at the same time. True or false? Retinol I feel like these exfoliant. questions are getting trickier. Yes, we started out pretty easy. another one that really trips people up. We get asked about it quite a bit. Oh. Uh, sorry. Jennifer Sims Barrett says false. She is right. So I think the reason that people um, get nervous about retinol and exfoliants is that A, retinol is a pretty powerful ingredient, so they're afraid that the combination of the two might be too strong for their skin. And then the other thing that people get confused about is some people have this flaking reaction to retinol, so they think it already is an exfoliant. Retinol isn't an exfoliant, they work in two totally different ways. Retinol is really um, going in and making your um, skin act in a more healthy type of way, and exfoliation is all about removing the built up dead layer of skin. So two totally different things, they are absolutely fine to use together. Do your exfoliant first, do your retinol after it, but you can use them and you should use them. All right, last question. Is this the last one or do yeah. you have another? Last okay. one. Last question. Your last chance to get a product. True or false? You can use both AHA and BHA. By the way, for everyone while we're waiting for the answer, um, if you aren't one of the lucky few who wins this giveaway, you're all right, because on our website right now, 20% off all exfoliants, really good sale, so stock up, get yours. I mean, every single exfoliant on the site. Like That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I might have to stock up a little bit myself. So everyone on Instagram got that question right, but the first one was Hannah. Hannah, you are getting a, uh, a nice little exfoliant. Nice. Yes, nice. So yeah, you can use them together because if you um, want to get the different benefits that each has to offer, you can do it in different ways. So I wouldn't say apply them at the same time, like don't put your BHA on and then put your AHA over it, but you can alternate. So either you could do, you know, AHA on Mondays and BHA on Tuesdays and vice versa, kind of going back and forth. You could also, if you're somebody who likes to exfoliate twice a day, you could do AHA in the morning, BHA at night, or you can flip that order around, it really doesn't matter. 
Um, another thing that I do, and I've just started doing this, is treating the different areas of my face differently. So in my T-zone, using the BHA, but really on this area of my face, it's just more of that normal skin tone um, and normal texture, normal, normal, not dry, but just like right in the middle. So I'll do the AHA on the sides and then just keep the BHA to the areas where I want to focus to that oily skin, blackheads, all of those things. And if someone, now I'm going to ask a question that might be making the issue more complicated, but I don't think so because Desiree is a genius. Um, is there any added benefits using both or if you find something that's working for you, is it best to just stick with it? You know, you could go either way with it. I think that I do start to see a little bit more of a difference when I do use both, even though they have, you know, they, they share this common exfoliating property in common. but. AHAs do work slightly different than BHAs. So I think I do get just like a little bit more of a dramatic reveal when I've been alternating between the two. Um, but if you're somebody who's just really loving your BHA or you're really loving your HA, doesn't mean you have to use both. Yeah, it's more it's of a personal preference. Broken, don't fix it. Right, and I'm somebody who like, obviously I'm a skincare junkie, so yeah. I wanna keep trying different things and experimenting, but if you find something that works, you don't have to go that route. It's really a personal choice. I guess one more way to use both of them that I should mention is you could also use, you know, whatever exfoliant that's more geared to, towards your skin type, use the mild form of that. So let's say you're somebody who uses the 2% BHA liquid. Use that all week long. And then once a week, instead of using that product, you could sub in the higher strength exfoliant of the other type. So I've done that where I've used the 2% BHA liquid and then like on a Saturday night, I'll switch it up and do the 10% AHA just to have the little bit of a difference um, in a more advanced formula of, of that higher strength formula. So and there's is, a lot of different ways you can play with it. Is once a week a hard and fast rule? It's not a hard and fast rule. You could switch, I mean, you could do like the other AHA that's a higher strength a couple times a week. Um, you know, just pay attention to what your skin is responding like. If you start to get kickback, which is more of like redness or any sort of flakiness or just doesn't feel quite right on your skin. You've gone too far. You've gone too far. <laughs> Let's tailor it back. Maybe you need to just switch to using one. Okay. I think that's it for our giveaway and our exfoliation 101. Now let's go into any um, regular, it doesn't have to be about exfoliation Q&A questions from you guys. Yeah, Jennifer Warwick would love some rec recommendations on uh, redness. Okay, so for redness, you really wanna go with our Calm line. It is really and truly every product is formulated to address redness. Everything's got soothing properties in it. Um, as we mentioned before, BHA by nature is soothing. So when we're talking exfoliation, that's the route you wanna go. But under that Calm line, there's one set of products for normal to oily skin and one set of products for normal to dry. So you can go in there and pick, but it makes it super easy that we now have this line that is addressing that skin concern. Um, first of all, we have a Nicole fan club happening. Woo! <laughs> uh, oh, Jay Warwick so. says, Nicole's a rock star. Yes. Nicole oh. and Paula's Choice <laughs> is a perfect combo like peanut butter and chocolate. Ooh. Oh! And That's in really addition nice. to that, we just got a question from Awesome Alley 33 would like some recommendations for dry skin and acne. Ugh, this is one of the tough ones. So when you have dry skin, you need to address that moisturization factor, but you also don't want to be using products that are clogging your pores. So let's dial it back to exfoliation. When you have acne, you have to be using BHA. That's really gonna be the things that's going under uh, in unclogging those pores. So from our clear line, we have our anti-redness exfoliating solution with 2% salicylic acid. By the way, if I didn't mention this before, salicylic acid is BHA. It's the same thing, they're same in the one. I know it confuses a lot of people, but that's the exfoliant you wanna use. But as far as your other products go, you know, we have a lot of different great cleansers that can um, break down makeup and break down the substances that would be causing breakouts without being harsh and drying on skin. So just look at our cleansers for normal to dry skin. We have several different options under the resist line. I really, really love the res um, optimal, what is it called? Resist optimal cleanser. Resist optimal results hydrating Opt cleanser. Yes, the one in the dark blue bottle. So that's a really great option. And then 
From there, for your moisturizer, from the resist line in the normal to oily side, we have an anti-aging clear skin hydrator. I think that's really good for somebody with acne prone skin because it's giving you that hydration, but there's also ingredients in there that are just, they're really tailored to not make breakouts worse. They're really tailored to actually even help with the leftover breakout marks that you might be having. Um, there's an ingredient in there, lactoperoxidase, that really helps with that. So those are a couple of good options. Just make sure that everything you're doing to your skin is gentle. So if you're not using Paula's Choice, make sure your products are fragrance free, alcohol free, irritation free. That is one of the big ways that people are causing breakouts on their skin and not even realizing it. So keep those things in check. Uh, one more thing is that you might need to use a benzoyl peroxide product depending on how severe your acne is. And you can find that in our clear line as well tricky part with that is that it can be drying for some especially if you're already somebody who has dry skin so just make sure you're also following up with your moisturizer sandy hogard chilton asked what do you think of those sheet masks that are so popular right now okay you can give your <laughs> like do you have an opinion on them i um i know our opinion on them <laughs> you can give your candidate like give your answer as it is i'll say what i think i actually think that they can be fun. If they're well formulated and you wanna do it, go for it. The downsides are that they're not the most environmentally friendly, they're not the most economical. Um, you know, when you think about like a lot of them cost around 10 bucks a pop, which is pretty expensive when you could be getting a mask that comes in a tube and you're getting a lot more uses out of it. There's really no research showing that they are any sort of um, advantageous for the way that they deliver the ingredients to skin. So it's not like you're getting an extra benefit in that way. They're a novelty. If you like yours and if you have a well-formulated one, go for it. It's just there's not anything special about them in regards to how they're actually affecting your skin. And the one thing I will say, because I used to, before I worked here, I would go get facials every once in a while and I would totally love how my skin felt for you know, two days and then suddenly I was back to my red, mm -hmm. bumpy, uneven texture and I was like, but I just spent a hundred dollars on yeah. a facial and it turns out that it's true if you just spend that money on a skincare regime that you use daily, you don't need the facial the that's facial $200 and yeah. all of that and so like my skin has really never felt better. I feel like I just had a facial yesterday every single day. Right, yeah, that's a really good point to make because with sheet masks, you know, it's such a temporary thing and with facials, it's such a temporary thing. But if you just invest in products that are gonna give you those results all the time and you do it yourself, it's not that hard. Point made right there. Like it is what you should be doing for skin. It takes a lot better care of your skin. Because think about it, if, if I always equate it to going to a trainer once a month and never working out the rest of the month <laughs> or actually like, also something I like to do. <laughs> I don't even, I don't even go to the trainer once a month, but, or like working out daily, like obviously working out daily is going to give you better results. It's the same for your skin. Um, you had mentioned benzoyl peroxide for dry skin and acne. Her pretty counts wants to know, uh, actually, Sorry, that's the wrong one. Uh, Treasure Beauty Finds wants to know, I always find benzoyl peroxide leaves my skin flaky. How can I counteract that moisturizer doesn't seem to help alone? Some people just really can't use benzoyl peroxide and that may be the case for you. I have heard of people um, here who will use it, but also make sure that they're using our Calm Serum. So that's really soothing. It's also a little bit hydrating. You, if you aren't already using one of our toners, use a toner. Toners have so many, our toners have so many different soothing ingredients in them. Um, you know, if the moisturizer itself isn't helping temper it down, and, and if you try those things and they aren't doing it either, I've found different times in my life where for whatever reason, my skin has been a little bit more reactive to benzoyl peroxide and I just had to give it up for a while. And it sucks because it doesn't allow you to get that um, acne fighting that it provides, but with the BHA, I can pretty much maintain the results well enough that I don't have to use it. Okay, I think we should go to our fan mail now. Oh, Will exciting. you do the honors of reading it? I would love to. Okay. Oh, I love when it comes in the air mail envelope. <laughs> um, Straight through And we do all like mail. getting mail. Send us some, send us a postcard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We do, Paula will keep them at her desk. Our CEO is 
kept them at her. Oh, that's yeah. so nice. Okay, this is a love letter to our Skin Perfecting 2% BHA liquid, which is just like this one, but in a different texture. And this person says, I cannot live without this 2% BHA liquid. Okay, a bit of an exaggeration, but this stuff rocks. The only way for women in their 50s and older to improve their skin is to gently exfoliate with acids and products like this one. This works. My skin is clearer, plumper, and more hydrated than ever, and I am a complete skincare nut. I've tried a ton of products, both high-priced and drugstore, and this stuff is liquid fountain of youth. Ooh, I know, right? And add it to your skincare routine and you won't be sorry. Hashtag truth. I don't know. I feel the same way, actually. I feel like I've been I've been joking around the office that I'm Benjamin Buttoning, <laughs> but I do feel like I'm going back in time a little bit. It's awesome. Okay, guys. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. Next week, we're going to have a really fun show where we're debunking some beauty trends. So let's do a little cheers. Thank you so much for coming on the call. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye.